Hello and welcome to MKF2131. This is Marketing Decision Analysis. This is the second segment of our week three lecture where we are going to continue how to calculate market share and some of their matrix. Now in this video, we are going to go through the relative price index, something that we have built on from the previous video when we talk about the revenue market share and unit market share. So as you can see in here, relative price index is basically the average price paid for a particular brand with respect to weighted average price paid across all the brand in the basket or in the space that are competing with. So just to give you a clarification, I'm going to go through some of the calculations right here. So as you can see that the tables are pretty much blank. And what we are going to do in the lecture is that I'm going to fill out a particular segment or so just a snippet of it. And what you have to do is you have to complete the rest. So just make sure you go through these calculations in your own time so that at least you know how to calculate some of these metrics like unit market share, revenue market share, and so on. Okay, I'm gonna use my pen here. As you can see that there are different hypothetical brands. So Nippy, Zippy, Squeeze, and all these different brands. So I'm gonna do one for Nippy, and you can try to complete the rest. As what I said in class, the best way for you to learn this calculation is always through brute force, where you keep doing it over and over again so that at least you will get comfortable in that. So we know that Nippies has 50 thousands of units sold. Average price paid is 15,000. Revenue is 750 million. So that is as simple as 50 times 15. So that will give you 750. Just want to clarify in here that this is actually average. So this is average, not total. So the rest are all total. This is average. This is total again. Just recapping on what we have learned in the previous video, how do we calculate unit market share? Now, if you remember, unit market share is the total number of units sold by your particular brand divided by the total market unit. Now, as we can see, the Nippy sold 50,000 units and there are 200,000 units being sold across five different brands. So because of that, the unit market share in here, it will be, okay, let me just write this down. So 50 divided by 200. So this will give me one over four, and that will give me 25%. Fair enough. What's the revenue market share? Now, if you remember as well, the revenue market share is indeed the, the total number of revenue that you made in your brand divided by the total market revenue. Now, as you can see here, Nippy is making 750 million and the total number of revenue sold is 3,000. So if you calculate that and you will do the same thing, so that will be 750 divided by 3000 that will give me also 1 over 4 coincidentally and that's also 25% now the next question is if we are going to take the revenue market share divided by the unit market share so unit market share is 25% revenue market share is also 25% so in this case it's basically 25% divided by 25% is equals to one. And the price divided by weighted average price. So average price in here is 15. And the weighted average price, so the weighted average price means the price that is weighted across these five brands are also 15. So this will give me one. So what is what, what does that mean? So that means that 
the revenue market share divided by unit market share are going to be the same as the price divided by the weighted average price. Now, as you can see here, this is what we have learned from the previous formula, which is in this particular slide. So average price paid for brand A divided by the weighted average price is equals to revenue market share divided by unit market share. And that is also called the relative price index. So these are different ways for you to calculate the relative price index. So I'm going to just write that down. So this is the relative price index. So you can calculate either with that formula or you can calculate that with that. Actually, I want to do one more. So at least just to give you an idea. Let's do for ZP. Uh, ZP, it says that the unit market share, as you know, is the unit market share sold for brand divided by the total unit sold across the market. So unit market share will be equivalent to so the first one, as you probably already know, 45 divided by 200. So this will give you about 22.5%. Okay, 22.5%. Revenue market share, that will be whatever you get for the revenue. So revenue is 900 divided by the total revenue that you are going to have in the market, which is 3 thousand okay so that is going to be about 30 percent and at the end you can find out which is the relative price index we're going to prove them that they are the same again so revenue market share is 30 percent and unit market share is 22.5 so i'm going to just write that down again so 30%, which is my revenue market share, divided by the unit market share, that's 22.5%. That's going to give you 1.33, just recurring. And lastly, price divided by weighted average price. So if you look at here, it's 20 uh, as my price. So I got price, it's 20 divided by... 15 and that will give me the same thing as 1.333 now what we can see here is that again we have shown that the revenue market share divided by the unit market share it's going to be equivalent as price divided by weighted average price so please complete the other three as exercise so at least you know how to do this and at the end of the week i'm going to post up the answers now before we move on to the next segment we are going to answer this question. When will relative price index will be greater than one? So as we can see here, the instance where it's greater than one, like for example, in this case is the ZP. So ZP, it's 1.33, whereby it's actually greater than one. So what makes it greater than one? So mathematically, if you want to get greater than one, you have to to have the numerator, which is the top of the fractions, has to be higher than the denominator, or which is the bottom of the fraction. So as you can see, the top of the fraction in this case is 30. The bottom of this fraction is 22.5. So because of that, you will be receiving a much higher number than one. So the same thing here as well, whereby the price has to be higher or the numerator has to be higher than the denominator. So in this case, 20 is definitely higher than 15. That's why it's more and you will get the, you will get the relative price index of greater than one. So to answer this question, when will relative price index be greater than one? It's when, so when the price of the brand is basically greater than the average price in the market. Okay. 
or you can also say so this is the first answer or the second answer it can be when revenue market share of the brand is greater than the unit market share of that brand so i hope this makes it clear in terms of the calculation so if you recap what's relative price index is that how does the price of your own commodity is going to be different compared to market in general so if your relative price index is greater than one, it's indicating that you are, your price is actually above what the market is normally gonna pay in average.